Ah yes, the soothing sounds of silence. This is the Zero SRS. It's fast, fun, comfortable, high tech, and oh so quiet. But it's also $42,000. So is this the future of motorcycling? Well, maybe. Californian electric motorcycle pioneer Zero has returned to the Australian market after a six year absence. The brand, which started life in 2006, has often been compared to electric car giant Tesla, but the fortunes of the two companies couldn't be any more different. When Tesla arrived on the scene in the late noughties, it promised enhanced tech, cheaper prices and a change in the stigma surrounding electric vehicles. By 2017, Tesla was one of the world's biggest automakers and electric cars are now as normal as sliced bread. Sadly, the same can't be said for electric two-wheelers, with motorcyclists still concerned by things like battery range, charging opportunities, lack of noise, and rather large price tags. So why then is Zero back in the Australian market after not one, not two, but three failed attempts? Well, last year a Zero representative said, Australia's electric vehicle demand is ramping up as the nation's charging infrastructure rapidly expands. And local distributor Peter Stevens said, our leadership strongly believes electric motorcycles are an inevitable development in the long-term future of Australian motorcycling, and we are passionate about being a leader in the way of the future. Time will tell if Zero's fourth attempt will succeed down under, but for now at least on a surface level, the electric motorcycle picture in Australia isn't looking all that promising. Most of the major motorcycle manufacturers have electric factored into their future plans, but none of them appear ready to pull the trigger just yet. And a quick look at Zero's competition in Australia reveals, well, there isn't a whole lot. The praised but overpriced Harley Livewire was short-lived in Australia, the Aussie-built Savage C series is yet to go into production, and Kawasaki's hybrid electrics have been put on, uh, ice. In fact, the only real direct competitor for Zero is the limited Italian luxury brand, Energica. Of course, electric scooters and dirt bikes, which don't require big battery ranges and quick charging times, make a little more sense. Affordable brands like Fonz and Super Soco are doing okay, while Stark and Suron are flying the flag for electric off-road. But in a big country like Australia, where bikes are used primarily for recreational purposes, battery range and charging infrastructure are very important factors. And all of that aside, this bike is still $42,000, which realistically is outside the budgets of the average Australian. But not all hope is lost. Let's go back to Tesla for a moment. Under Elon Musk, the US company started with expensive and premium vehicles in a bid to show the public that electric cars can be cool. Then, in 2017, it introduced the Model 3, which was a cheaper and more practical vehicle made for a mass market. And while the electric motorcycle scene hasn't progressed nearly as quickly as cars, Zero has followed somewhat a similar path to Tesla, albeit on a much smaller scale. And this SRS right here is one of the flagship models in the Zero range. In fact, only the DRS-X Adventure Tourer is more expensive. But Zero also has far cheaper models in its lineup, including the DS for just over 32k, the S for just over 30k, and the FX and FXE for just over 25k. And you can even get 2023 run-out models for as little as 13k. The point is that cheap electric motorcycles are not just a pipe dream, but for now at least, High-end models like the SRS are trying to make electric cool and act as poster boys for the electric revolution. So for 42k, how good really is the Zero SRS? Is it just an expensive commuter or is it possible to have some fun without getting stuck on the side of the road with a flat battery? Before we find out, let's take a quick look at the facts and figures. The Zero SRS is a fully fared version of the SRF naked bike. But while it looks a little like a sports bike, the Zero reps described it as more of a sport tourer which is pretty accurate if you forget its rather limited battery range. The SRS is powered by a 17.3 kilowatt hour battery paired with an 84 kilowatt air cooled motor that pumps out 189 newton meters of torque. But yes, I hear you, how far will it go? Zero claims a city range of 275 kilometers and a highway range of 187 kilometers. But of course, those numbers will drop noticeably when you take into account things like hills, wind, twitchy throttle hands, and even the rider's weight. So, what does that all mean? Well, it means that Zero's estimates are likely a little ambitious, but let's put them to the test a little later. And what about charging? Well, Zero claims the integrated charger can get the bike to 95% in 2.2 hours, or 1.1 hours with the optional rapid charger. Not too shabby, but if time isn't of the essence, then you can always plug it into the wall at home for an overnight charge. Elsewhere, the SRS packs adjustable shower suspension, J1 brakes, Pirelli Diablo Rosso 3 tyres, a belt drive, and LED lights. 
And yes, being electric, of course, there is also loads of tech, including a full color TFT display with Zero's own Cypher 3 Plus operating system and the very useful Zero smartphone app. The Zero app connects to your bike and shows you all sorts of useful data like battery status, charging times, and even cost savings compared to a petrol vehicle. You can also remotely customize the multiple ride modes and even make over the air firmware updates for the bike. Throw in cruise control, heated grips, cornering traction control, and straight line ABS, and you have a pretty decent package. And if all that wasn't enough, there's even a clever reverse function. So on paper, the Zero SRS looks the goods, but how does it go on the road? My first impressions of the SRS, well, believe it or not, despite the lack of a clutch lever, a gear lever, vibrations and, well, any engine noise, it actually feels just like a motorcycle. Yes, the SRS turns like a motorcycle, stops like a motorcycle and accelerates like a motorcycle, albeit a really fast one. And okay, I get it, part of the fun of riding a motorcycle is the skill of changing gears, the engine noise, the vibration. But after riding this for a while, you kind of get used to it and it really is enjoyable. I'm not saying that electric's gonna replace the joys of petrol engines, but as a separate unique experience, there's something really new and exciting about it. The SRS, like many electric powered vehicles, is wickedly fast off the line. The power is smooth and linear and the traction control system does a great job of keeping everything in check. It's a comfortable machine too, living up to its sports tourer tag. And now for the big question, battery range. Well, for starters, city range is not a problem. I could ride around on this bike for hours on a single charge. And really, if you're having to ride more than two hours to get to work, then you probably need a new job. If your workplace has a Type 2 charger, then great. But simply plugging into the wall will easily get you a full charge after a full day's work. But what about highway riding? Well, today I rode 100 kilometers with a mix of country roads and highways. And when I got to the charger, I had 48% left. And what that tells me is that Zero's estimate is pretty close. With a mix of riding, you should be able to get close to 180 kilometers out of a full battery. And that's not too bad. Of course, that will drop lower if you decide to ride like Valentino Rossi, but if you're just cruising, you should get a pretty decent range out of it. Now, on the surface, that range might not seem like a lot, and sure, you're not going to be doing a lap of Australia without some serious pre-planning but the SRS still offers more than enough range for commuting and a nice leisurely weekend day trip or overnighter. That fact is helped by the ever-increasing charging network which is getting better and more efficient by the minute. And sure, charging up your motorcycle might not yet be as easy as filling up with petrol, but it does give you the good opportunity to plug in, chill and wait it out with a coffee. Yes, this bike is still 42k and yes, there is still a lot of work to be done with battery range and charging infrastructure. But bikes like the SRS are an indication that maybe, just maybe, we're heading in the right direction. I'm not at all suggesting you suddenly go and sell all your petrol bikes, but just consider electric as a fast, fun and fresh alternative experience. Only time will tell if electric is the future, but I'm going to enjoy every minute of the ride in the meantime. Thanks for watching and I really hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you give us a like, subscribe to the channel and let us know in the comments below what you think of electric. Would you consider buying an electric motorcycle or are you petrol all the way?